Hello there. My name is Naz Urbina. Um, I'm from Urbina Consulting, um, and I'm here with uh, my client, Britt Elmer, and we are going to take you through uh, a case study called Storming a Castle. This, this presentation has a lot of history. I first presented uh, uh, my methodology for how you uh, storm a castle at LavaCon about five or six years ago for the very first time. And uh, it's been a popular session. I've done in other places since uh, based on literally hundreds of projects and asking for budget uh, of, of many, many Hello, sizes. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Professor Glickman Oop. by recording. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it live today, um, but this is the same lecture you would have gotten. Joel, I don't know if you can hear that, but we've got another session audio bleeding into ours. Sorry about that, folks. There we go. All right. <laughs> so I hope that will be the last one, the last full start. This is storming the castle how to reach those who control the power and the purse strings, a case study presented by Abrina Consulting and Thesis. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Naz Urbina. I am a content strategist and modeler. Uh, I wrote a book, a book that some of you may know, Content Strategy, Connecting the, the Dots Between Business Brand and Benefits with my co-author, Rahel Ann Bailey. That was actually, thankfully, nice, very nicely received and has become a textbook at various universities one of which I teach at, which is the content strategy program uh, at the University of Applied Sciences in Graz, Austria. Uh, along my uh, lengthy career, I have co-founded two organizations. One, of course, is Urbina Consulting itself and also the Omnichannel X Conference, uh, which is kind of a sister conference to LavaCon, which touches on some of the same, er uh, some of the same areas, but from a different perspective. I have 19 years experience in uh, large complex projects, uh, lots of Lots of pharmaceuticals, enterprise uh, software, uh, telecommunications, uh, microprocessors, and, and that kind of stuff. Lots of languages, lots of regulations, uh, lots of challenges. One of, one of, one of these projects uh, was with Thesis. Hi, my name is Bray Elmer. I work for Thesis, a global payments company. Thesis is a leading provider of seamless, secure, and innovative payment solutions nearly 200 financial institutions and retailers in approximately 80 countries worldwide. I have 23 years of techcom experience, primarily in the payments industry, and have held various positions as you can see here. And currently, I am the program implementation consultant for content strategy at Thesis. Thank you very much. Uh, Britt, there's a little chat that's a little hard to, to hear you, so just remember to speak up. Okay, so that's us. Uh, this presentation, though, is about you. We're assuming that you have a great idea for how to improve something content related, and you're going to need uh, money and power to get it off the ground. Before our project started, our strategy to improve our users' experiences with our content and documentation was to fix every feedback, comment, or issue that came in. We wanted to fix everything all the time. This was not a strategy. It was just a survival tactic. Our content authoring tools and technology were dated. I mean, seriously dated. We have been in SGML for more than 20 years, and eventually a piece of our software was going to no longer be supported. We had a decision to make. We could patch the one piece of dying software and keep going with what was not working for our users, or we could completely change the way we thought about content, knowledge, and our users. So I took advantage of one piece of our software coming to its end of life and made it the opportunity to start a content strategy program at Thesis. Seeing Mavis' presentation at Lavacon five years ago, and networking with others at the conference inspired me to step forward while others stepped backward and retreated to the comfort of what we had always done. I accepted the challenge. I wanted to storm the castle and I wanted the treasure, but I needed money to get it done and the power to make it happen. But above all else, I needed help. 
that help came in the form of Nas's approach to storming the castle and reaching those with the money and the power to make our strategy happen. So this presentation is going to be a methodology for how you storm the castle, navigate the many, many chambers, and get back with a treasure. So you can take your initiative and make it a reality. So we break down our, uh, our story into four parts. Doing your research, choosing your team, planning and equipment, and actually storming the castle. So a castle is a many splendored thing with um, lots of complexities, many rooms, maybe a dragon or two. So at the very beginning, we're gonna have to do our research. That means validating our assumptions thoroughly. That means also validating your assumptions thoroughly about your audience, about your content, about what they require of it, um, what the technical requirements are, how you measure return on investment, what your metrics are for, for the overall project, and very importantly, the corporate climate that you're in. Finding out how people feel about, uh, about content, about your users, whether they care more about top line growth, bottom line savings, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the pitfalls in this area are when you've got all ideas and no tech. So you have a great vision, uh, but you have no understanding or you have no capacity technically to make this actually happen. At the other end of the spectrum, I've, I see lots and lots of projects which are all about, we wanna to move to Ditto, or we wanna get on this new CMS, or we wanna take this, get this new authoring tool. And this new technology is gonna magic, magic up some difference with customer experience. So you definitely want, not, want to avoid being all tech and no strategy. Lack of metrics, uh, because there's just not any available information about content. Not realizing you're pitching, which Britt will tell you lots about, and thinking people care about content. For us at Jesus, our biggest pitfall was that we thought people really cared about our content. They didn't. Well, not until they needed it and ran into an issue and couldn't find an answer. Then they really cared. We had a lot of ideas on how to fix the things that were broken, and when we tried to, our outdated technology stopped us. We soon realized we needed a major tech upgrade. I never liked being that sales or pitch person, but I soon realized that I had to be. I had to sell our case all the time, in the hallways, in the break room, water cooler, even waiting in line at the cafeteria. I realized that my passion for a content strategy was the key to getting through these doors at the castle. I had to get comfortable with being the pitch person. Metrics, what metrics? We couldn't see beyond a PDF page count or page hit. And there is more to measure to show the value of your content and documentation than a PDF page count. It was hard to convince people that you can't solve documentation and content management problems with all tech or even by throwing more content out there because people already couldn't find what they were looking for. We knew we needed a strategy to make our content and our users' experiences better. So we went to the users and we talked to them to find out what they really cared about and how they were really using our content. We captured and documented what we needed to really focus on and measure going forward. Once you've done your research, you can start going, going about putting your team together. I like to break down the content core team into four key roles, which I've represented here. This is slightly showing my age, but regardless of whether you know where this image came from, you're going to need a strategist, someone who has the vision and can uh, keep everyone on the team and all the sur surrounding stakeholders moving together in the same direction, someone who owns the strategy. You're gonna need a doer someone who's willing to fix up PowerPoints, book meetings, contact people, uh, take notes, and so on and so on. You're going to need a technologist who can communicate between technical stakeholders, um, both inside your business and in, in the suppliers, especially if you have a highly technical product or are taking on a, a complex uh, solution. And you're going to need a presenter, somebody who can bring all of this across in a way which makes sense for that audience. Someone who's going to keep your vision sounding good and keeping those bridges built internally within the organization to move your initiative along. Oh, sorry. One more than one person can play more than one role, but it's important to know uh, that you need all four roles. 
pitfalls here, knowing yourself. Who are you really in this, in this team and what role can you play? Availability of team members and then too many cooks, too big uh, and too many team members in your, in your core team. For us at Jesus, it was a really big challenge. But first, I need to state this. You need to be humble because you can't do it all yourself. You are not the A team. Let me repeat that again. You can't do it all yourself. We were so behind in industry standards for our methods and technology, we knew we needed help, professional help. We needed someone who was not tied to our technology or software, someone who learned from both successes and failures, and someone who saw our potential and really liked the challenge. Availability. You really need a dedicated team. Having a team member assigned with some availability only gets some stuff done. We knew we needed like-minded team members, but also team members that would challenge us. You need a little skepticism thrown in there to keep the balance. You need someone to ask, is this really possible? Can we really make this happen to really push you forward? And keep the core team small. Too many cooks in the kitchen never makes things easier. Early on, set the expectation to the team and management of how big the team needs to be and emphasize that while the team might be small, the team will be effective. They will consult with lots of people, users and stakeholders, and so forth, even the yay-sayers and the naysayers. Once you've got your team together, then it's time to look at planning and equipment. You're going to need lots of different things to make it through the various chambers of your castle um, and make progress. What we mean concretely here is different equipment, uh, different documents for different audiences, stages, and purposes. I like to say you're going to need a content strategy for your content strategy. So that means having content assets, defining defining who your different audience profiles are, figuring out what their communication needs are, and then serving those needs on the right cadence uh, and with the right messages. So tools that we're going to talk about are customer, things like customer journey maps, the org chart, uh, scope and elevator pitches, and concept diagrams. I like to talk a lot about customer journey mapping. It's been transformative in my career in the last five years. Uh, and it's all about mapping out your user's story and what questions they have versus the content that you um, provide. What's really effective about customer journey mapping is that you can actually break down questions over time and say, here is the gap in customer experience today. This is where people are unhappy. And this is the content that we don't have or the content that is not serving its purpose today. So it's a really great way to show the gaps and get everyone around the customer experience and be able to see things the same way. And you want to show that customer journey map to a whole lot of people. Um, org chart bingo is a, little, uh, is a little game that I have played on many, many projects to help you keep track of who is for, against, uh, neutral, et cetera, for your content initiative. Because especially in a complex organization, you're going to really have to build a lot of bridges, contact, knock on a lot of doors, and find out where you can move forward influence uh, within the business to get the, the power and money that you need. For us, we had to go to each square until we hit a bingo. We were able to talk to all the squares, but it was when we connected the right squares in the right order, we got a bingo. I had to learn to see the map in front of me to know what battles or roadblocks and know where to stand firm and when to walk away. One of the tools that uh, I think is really important that, that I recommend highly is making sure you've got a really solid elevator pitch. So when you're when you're going around to the different uh, squares on your bingo, that you can communicate concisely. So on uh, the on this project, we had go, current tools are going end of life, um, as Britt mentioned. Also, there was a change to agile, which necessitated a major rethink. And then the spending money in the wrong places. We could point to uh, out-of-date technology, ineffective use of resources, and unhappy customers and staff. So this is a nice one, two, three. And I really recommend having a nice one, two, three of your content initiative. And we get together in workshops and we make sure that everyone in the core team can stand up and deliver the elevator pitch 
in their own words, it doesn't have to be reading from a script and it shouldn't be reading from a script so that they can be ambassadors for the project every time they leave, uh, every time they speak to anybody. So this is what we used uh, on our first round of management presentations. And then when we got up to a different round of management presentations, we had to go a different direction. This is the response that we had when a manager told us, can you just show me this whole initiative on a single slide? For us, we got creative and we made this talking tool to help us navigate as we hopped through our org chart bingo. For us, we've created a content strategy placement as a talking tool. We found, the talking, we found that talking about a strategy wasn't as effective as showing the strategy. It helped us to connect with each person we talked to, and it helped us to explain content strategy and what it meant to that person or the group we were talking to. It helped us to visually show our mission, mission and the treasure we were seeking, happier users. Some of the pitfalls in planning and equipment is that your plan, uh, your, your scope is, is too fast and your plan is to move too fast. Your scope is too big. It's inefficient, insufficiently aligned or researched, or it's simply impossible with the budget and resources you have available to you. Our org chart, chart bingo cards change. Sometimes we knew they changed and other times not so much. When we tried to do too much too fast, we, like trying to talk to everyone as soon as we could, we didn't see that our game changed and we needed a new bingo card. When your organization bingo card changes, adapt, pivot, and readjust your game plan. Organizational change is going to happen. It is important to get comfortable with change. Let me say it again, get comfortable with change. It always happens and things never go as planned. This year is a perfect example. We ran into budget challenges and we couldn't win our budget in one single round of bingo. We had to go through several. We had to move ahead in steps with our budget. We had to first get our discovery budget, represent our case and scope, and then get our implementation budget. And then we had to present again and get our growth and roll up budget. Your scope needs to align with your budget too. You have to be realistic at what you can do with the money you got. You always want to do more and think you can think you can do more, but scope creep comes and your budget won't creep with it. You need to reset your expectation as well as everyone else's, including management. If you try to make things happen too fast with a content strategy and a program, your details get overlooked requirements are missed and you forget to document what decisions are made. Slow down, take a moment to reassess, adjust and write things down, then move forward. So we're ready to finally storm. We've got to the top of the castle and we're gonna do that pitch. This is one of the most important things in this deck, the, the pitch checklist. I'm gonna run through it quickly because uh, we're nearly on time but you're gonna need item, an itemized budget and ROI over time. Usually a three or five year total cost of ownership showing that you've thought about this over the long term. Your key milestones along the way, as well as your key escape points if things aren't going well. Um, your risk, risk matrix and mitigation plan, some relevant case studies that show you're not making all this up and a good answer to the question, what if we do nothing? And finally, contextual alignment with other initiatives so you can show that this, this strategy really fits in your castle. So the storing pitfalls, getting the messages right, uh, no sense of urgency, not being concise or visual enough, not enabling your audience as an ally, and not being prepared for the half win and repeat. So we're just about on time. This is actually our last slide. Do you mind if, we, if uh, Britt just runs through this quickly? Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. You usually can't storm the whole castle in one go round. Be prepared for your partial win. Each time you storm a part of the castle, you'll get a partial win. For us, we got a third of our original budget and team at the start, but that was vastly more than we had gotten in decades. Part of our org chart bingo meant that we had to talk to groups that we knew we could help them. 
but they may, they did not see the urgency and they didn't have the time or commitment or resources. They got complacent and didn't see a need or an urgency for these changes. You find you, ha you need to find a balance between over and under communicating. Speaking from my own experience, when you feel like you are communicating to everyone and you think you are even over communicating, you probably aren't. So make sure you are communicating to the right people in the right way. Be concise and relevant, use your tools, create new communication channels, get creative and make your messages visual too. When you communicate with your audience, your users, you make them your ally, your greatest resource. Your audience as your ally can open up more doors each time you storm the castle. They are another source of power. So we hope that this short presentation has uh, told you, has shown you that it can be done, that you can win real support uh, and significant enthusiasm for, for your initiative. And we thank you very much for attending. Please do keep in touch and send us some of your storming castle, uh, castle storming challenges, and we might be able to send you some more tips. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I wanted, I wanted to just add a little bit something about something Nas said about aligning your request resources. And to that, I think he meant aligning them to your corporate mission statement or your organization's department mission. One of the things we did at LavaCon last year was had everybody recite what their corporate mission statement is and about 40% of the audience could do it, but 60% could not. So I had everybody pull out their cell phone, look up what their organization's mission statement is. So everything they learned at LavaCon, they could go back and make sure everything they were doing was in alignment with the corporation's or organization's mission statement. So I invite you to do the same. Excellent tip, Jack. Okay, so we're gonna reset for the next speaker.